I think we're off the highs with this wrinkle as to whether or not the floor vote would be delayed. A confirmation of, of I think, Judge Kavanaugh would represent that the Trump agenda goes forward, even when you broaden this out and scope to look at whether or not the judge would support a more deregulatory environment, whether there's more power in the executive branch that would accrue to President Trump. I think those are at least background positives for the stock market. Obviously, volume was constrained yesterday by everybody's fascination with, with what was going on in D.C. I'm not sure how material it is to the market going forward. I think economic growth and corporate profits, which will start to be reported shortly, uh, are going to be very important for this particular run. Let's go to the other Ron that we have with us, Mr. Weiner. What do you think about going into this uh, new quarter here? Do you think that you should take a look at some of the winners? Seema Modi went through some of them, like AMD, for instance, at more than 100 percent. But then a loser like Twitter, Win Resorts. Do you think it's time to look at some of those losers, take some risk, buy low, and sell some of the other names here, take some profits off the table? So, uh, well, we're financial advisors. Most of our clients have made it, and our job's pretty much not to screw it up. So <laughs> trading, so trading is is, is something that is, you know, is there's a tax issue to it, sure. and we prefer to do to look at the fundamentals, look at companies, look at the future. We think we're in a Jetson economy. It's everything internet. It's chips. I think AMD may t t have seen its better days for the next couple of weeks or months as traders trade. But over the long term, I don't think there's a chip company out there. And we're now looking at uh, 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 MU for, for a trade, for a buy. Uh, I think the chips are fine. No, we're not selling the ones we like because we're looking long term. And we like what we see in both the technology, biotech, uh, and industrials as okay. well. We, All see, right. we like what we're seeing. So we're the, sticking. The trends, the trends that we're seeing now, you believe, will continue going forward. Uh, Sean, you know, trade, of course, has been a really big topic of conversation for some time now. We don't have any resolutions. The tariffs looks, look as if they are going to be slapped, uh, both here, what we just saw in September, and then the, the further increase in January. So what does that mean as you look at U.S. companies that have production in China that are subject to tariffs? What do you do going forward? Well, it certainly has put some pressure on to keep this trend going. I'm talking about the chip makers. We're, we're a long technology and a large cap U.S. value fund, but we don't own any of the FANG stocks. We do own AMD and we do own Micron, which was mentioned earlier. And what's interesting about those is that they're the core of technology. They're, they're what we call hard tech versus soft tech, like Twitter, who had an awful quarter. And that trend is going to continue whether we have rising interest rates or tariffs because of a thing we call the four horsemen of the Internet, which is driverless cars, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence streaming uh, video, and e-commerce. And all of those things rely upon a network and an infrastructure that needs to continue to build out. So what the trade uh, negotiations, war, whatever you want to talk about it as or say it as has done is it's put some of these names under pressure. It's put Micron under, under some pressure here recently um, to the point where they might actually be undervalued, although it'd be hard for me to argue that a stock like Micron Technology, which we do own, which trades at a single digit PE and generates a huge amount of free cash flow, which we love at Pacer ETFs, could in fact be undervalued. 